hello and welcome to a new topic branches of linguistics let's discuss about this topic in brief the first one is phonetics it is about the study of speech sounds followed by phonology which is about the study of organization of speech sounds then we have morphology it is about the study of formation of words now we have syntax it is about the study of a structure of sentences then we have semantics it is about the study of literal meaning and in contrast we have pragmatics which is about the study of meaning in use of context now let's discuss each one of them in detail a bit phonetics it's singular noun and it is related to a branch of linguistics concerned with speech sounds in other words we can say scientific study of human speech for example we can use this word in a sentence like this phonetics is a branch of linguistics we can make another sentence i have at most interest in phonetics we have another word phonetic without s we don't use s we have to delete it then it becomes adjective and we can use this in a sentence like we must study phonetic symbols here another important term is acoustics see the difference between phonetics and acoustics phonetics is the scientific study of speech sounds human speech but acoustics is science of sound scientific study of sound sound in general and this is a branch of physics where we where we study how the sound is transmitted how the sound is measured and so on and the person who is specialized in the subject matter of phonetics is known as phonetician that is to say a person who specializes in speech sounds phonology the word phonology it's a branch of linguistics it is the study of the abstract sound system of language in other words we can explain it is the study of the mental sound of a language and what is the abstract sound and what is the mental sound let's have some more points to understand this concept it is the organization and function of sounds in a language how sounds are organized how sounds function within a word let's have an example to understand this concept we have a sound for we have a sound i and then we have a sound na we have three different sounds but if we organize these three sounds in a particular way we have the word like fine with the same sounds if we organize in a bit different way we have another word that is knife so what we come to understand is that in the way we organize different sounds in the way we let sounds function each other to form a particular concept a particular word that is basically the area of the study of phonology and this phonology is in contrast with phonetics and phonetics it deals with physical aspects of sounds that is to say how is sound articulated how is sound produced it talks about how various organs of a speech help produce a particular sound phonetics does not deal at all with the organization of sounds with the function of sounds as we have had this example fine and knife so what we come to know and what we can conclude is that phonetics is all about how sound is articulated how sound is spoken how sound is produced and phonology is all about how sound is organized how a particular sound functions in word that is basically the difference between phonetics and phonology morphology and syntax let's first discuss about morphology in brief it's a branch of linguistics in other words we can say it is the study of the formation of words in language we can further explain this concept in this manner it is the study of the forms of words so within morphology it is the study of internal structure of words so morphology is all about the grammar of words all about how words are formed how words are made how words are altered to give another shape 
shape another meaning so all about making a new words inventing new words that is the main area of discussion of morphology we can have some examples to understand this concept for example we have prefix un and if you put this prefix before the root word like it becomes unlike likewise we have another suffix ly and if we put this suffix after the root word like it becomes likely likewise we have another example two affixes the first one is un prefix and the second one is ly suffix and if we put before and after the root word like it becomes unlikely so what we notice is that in the way we have found different words from unlike to likely to unlikely that is basically what we say the forms of words change when we add something before or after sometimes in between for example if you change present form of the verb into past then you make a little change in between for example come came sometimes when you change from singular into plural like book and books sometimes uh, we have different mechanisms different ways in which we create new words we form new words we make new words happen this is basically the area of the study of morphology in contrast syntax is the study of a structure of sentences in other words we can say how were sentences constructed how were sentences made how were sentences formed so what is basically the difference between morphology and syntax is that morphology is the grammar of words while syntax is the grammar of phrases and sentences morphology is the science of words while syntax is the science of sentence let's have some examples to understand this concept examples of syntax he writes a letter is a complete sentence now when we want to analyze this sentence syntactically we will look at the subject we will look at the predicate we will look at the verb and we will look at all the elements of grammar that help in formation of this sentence in the construction of this sentence likewise we can have another example her smile is precious now which part is the subject then we have the helping verb then we have the adjective why we say her smile what we come to understand is that syntax is all about the study of sentence while morphology is all about the study of words semantics it's similar noun and it refers to a branch of linguistics concerned with meaning connected with meaning it talks about meaning it deals with meaning in other words we can say scientific study of meaning is known as semantics the letter s at the end of this word is very important which signifies the subject of science discipline of science branch of science for example we can use this word in a sentence semantics is an interesting subject a singular noun or i take more interest in the subject of semantics in so many ways you can use this word semantics semantic without s we don't use s you have to delete it then it becomes adjective the meaning remains the same but the grammatical category of the word changes let's have an example we must develop our semantic outlook to understand a piece of text semantic outlook here the word semantic is used as an adjective following noun pragmatics it's a singular noun and it is concerned with meaning in context or use let's have some examples pragmatics is an independent discipline i'm so hungry i can eat a camel look at this example can i really eat a camel even though i'm hungry of course i cannot but the context in which this sentence is used gives you another sense of meaning and what is the meaning that the person is really very hungry so much hungry so much that he can eat a camel but of course he cannot eat a camel it exaggerates the intensity of hunger pragmatic without s we don't use s and it's an adjective but it has altogether different meaning and it means practical realistic so pragmatics that is concerned with meaning in context pragmatic without s has nothing to do with meaning it has altogether very different meaning it's an independent word with a different shade of meaning for example we can say we need to have a pragmatic approach practical approach realistic approach in contrast we have a word semantics deals with the study of meaning in fact both pragmatics and semantics talk about meaning but semantics talks about meaning 
as it is in the literal way what is written what is the connection between the words in a sentence that's it but pragmatics goes one step beyond and interpret meaning in the context in which it was used for example if i say i'm so hungry i can eat camel then from the point of view of semantics i will see how a person can eat a camel that's all but from the point of view of pragmatics we will interpret that no it means the person is really very hungry hope you understand the concept of the word thank you and goodbye